I always feel I should be talking to you like professor or doctor or something, but anyway, it's just the, the expertise yeah, that you... Hearing things are hard one, isn't it? Yeah, it, absolutely it is. You know, because you're not a doctor, it doesn't necessarily prepare you for parenting. I think probably my foster parenting and being a foster child was probably more prep for parenting than all of the qualifications I've got, in all yeah. honesty. Okay, beautiful. Now, didn't realise you were a foster child. I knew that you were a foster parent. So that actually oh, yep, yep. enables you to be in that space. Yeah, yeah. I think it gives a, um, an empathy and a view. You know, I can see it from the professional side, but I can certainly see it from the inside as well. OK. Now, yeah. are we as a country and a people dealing with more stress than ever before, or are these stresses simply amplified due to social platforms? What are you seeing? I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because we have greater rates of depression than during the Great Depression. And people seem to have, you know, much more solid reasons then. But, I mean, NIB have been running this parenting survey, the State of the Nation Parenting Survey, for five years. Certainly the trend has got worse and worse. Certainly parents are telling us that they're going without more. I mean, every year they feel the pressure more. Um, they're going with less and less. So it does seem to be a hard time now, certainly. Um, it's hard to know if it's harder than it was in the, yeah. you know, 40s and 50s. But certainly seems much harder than it was in the 70s, you know, well, in the look, 80s. this survey says that 95% of parents are facing, facing financial stress. The number seems incredibly high. Yeah. How are parents able to, to better cope with these types of challenges? I think um, we're lucky in some ways because parenting isn't really... I mean, you get better outcomes when we've got resources to throw at it, but really time is your best resource. You know, so sometimes it can have a silver lining that we're facing financial pressure because we don't just go to the movies. We are often just sitting down beside, you know, you know, beside your child and not actually talking. When you're poor and can't afford to go to the movies, oh, you go to the park, you go to the beach, um, you know, you go and walk in the forest, and you actually interact more and probably create higher quality memories, having spent no money, than when we just sort of take them to McDonald's and watch them eat chips, you know? So, yeah, it's doing those things. We have to capitalise on those things now. So in some regards, potentially having no extra money is not a bad thing because we can find other yeah. ways that, that don't cost much. Yeah, my, my kids, are, my youngest is 24 now, I'm on to Mokopana, but when my kids reflect on their childhood, one of their happiest childhoods was one of the times when I was the poorest. And um, so we had things like, um, I couldn't afford to get the car radio fixed. So we would sing more songs in the car we, um, and talk and play more games because there was no radio. Um, I would was in a very small house, so... I wasn't in a hurry to put the kids to bed because they were sort of in the same room and I couldn't turn the TV off. So I would read them lots of stories and sing lots of songs because I wasn't in a hurry to get on to the next thing. So, yeah, it's interesting that they reflect that their happiest, most connected times were when I was, um, you know, at my poorest and struggling quite a lot. So to some extent, you're saying that you're suggesting that parents might find other ways that are less financially uh, uh, connected to, to connect with their, with yes. their children. Yeah, I mean, I, I advocate this thing called a mate date, which people can just go onto YouTube and put Nathan Wallace mate date, it tells you how to do it. But it's 10 minutes a week, it's completely free, and it basically gives the kids you, you know, their most valuable resource. And really their most favourite thing in the world is their parent. Mm -hmm. And getting their parent in an unconditional way, not in charge where the parent's going to be available to them, is going to do their type of play. You know, that's a great reward for children to have, to own you for 10 minutes. We tend to multitask in this Western world. You know, we're playing with the kids, but we're checking the emails and we're listening to the national radio and we're, um, you know, and so the kids don't feel like they've got a full attention. 10 minutes a week at a predictable time um, where you give the kids your full undivided attention, spiritually, mentally, physically and emotionally, is hugely rewarding for the kids and it's hugely rewarding for you because it um, strengthens that connection. It really does make for a much more wonderful relationship and it's entirely free. What about when we come to, to things like food prices, which are rocketing, inflation rates yeah. up to 6%, how are we expected to help alleviate some yeah. of the, the stress and pressures this can put on whānau? It's a hard one, food, because it's basic, you know, uh, other than growing uh, growing your own. You know, the NIB is showing that um, the, the State of the Nation Parenting Survey is showing people are going with less fruit and vegetables. Oh. They are feeling the pinch there. You know, they're spending the same amount on um, groceries, but with inflation means that they're eating less each time. So, and I don't think there's any, with food, it's so basic, you can only give the same basic advice about being frugal and, you know, going around, I remember going to the, having to go to three different supermarkets so I could gather all the specials, rather than just going to one supermarket, you know, when things are really tight. There are ways you can get around it, um, well, you know, to an extent, but... Yeah. And some parents have major concerns around their children's financial future. Is finance something we should be yeah. discussing with children? 
Well, I think being financially and fiscally intelligent is good, but you don't want to put extra stress on your children. Mm. You don't want your children um, um, having the stress of adulthood and being worried about the electricity bill and is there going to be enough money. And so it's about riding that balance between teaching them to be fiscally responsible. And we do that through the traditional parenting things of, you know, giving them pocket money, helping them to budget their $10 a week and where it's going to go. I mean, those sorts of things are all we can do as parents to... Um, you know, to help them prepare um, fiscally and financially, unless you're going to leave them a big trust fund, which, you know, doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and to your point also, it's balancing work and parenting time with children. Is it a new thing, regardless of socioeconomic status, where parents need to be working longer hours? Is this a problem increasing for families? I think it's a huge problem, and that's certainly what the, the parenting survey is showing, that parents are feeling more and more the squeeze of trying to balance parenting and work. You know, we now have to have both parents work. Most of us don't live in the same community as our extended family, so we don't have those same networks. Nana is no longer an, an at-home person that you can just drop the kids off to. So, yeah, if there's more pressure on parents. They're parenting more alone and by themselves. And, um, and both going to work. So it's a very real thing. There is a real pressure for parents. That's why I think things like the mate date, where it's really time efficient, uses 10 minutes, they become increasingly important. We've really got to focus on quality because we are running out of quantity when it comes to time. Now, your show, The Kids Don't Come With a Manual on Fakata Māori, is designed to connect with viewers. What kind of feedback have you received? Um, people are really, really positive about the the the, um, the tikanga Māori focus, that we don't look at kids as having um, disorders and a deviation from the norm, but seeing this is how the artwork created you. So how do we work with that? Because it's hard to have, you, you know, it's important to have a high self-esteem. And if we start out by telling you you're wrong this way, you've got this disorder, this is wrong, you're faulty in this way, that's, that, that's difficult to have a high self-esteem. So they really loved the, the tikanga Māori coming through strongly and, and the solution coming from the Māori whānau, not from the expert. So if your kids, so yeah, really good feedback. If really your kids good. are a little bit different, what's the best way to discuss these types of things with them to make them feel comfortable and, and confident? Yeah, I think um, if your kids are a little bit different, that's probably good. You know, diversity is where you know um, evolution's taken us really. So celebrate those things. They're not necessarily disorders all the time. I think it's just about um, listening to your child's voice picking up on the cues. You know, you can see if the kid's getting overwhelmed. You can, um, you talk for five minutes and they spend the next 24 hours worrying about it, then you probably told them too much information. So, you know, it's the old classics of, you know, reflective listening, paraphrasing back what it is that you think the child said so that you can check that you've got it for meaning, encouraging the child to paraphrase back. It's all good communication, Neil, really, and, you know, that's just practice for all of us. Yeah, great advice. Love talking to you as, as per normal. Nathan Mikaira Wallace, Yori. host of Kids Don't Come with a Manual on Fakata Māori. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing some of your expertise. Ngā mihi.